Tomb of the Spider Queen. So here we are again. The final match of Group A. Team Dino against Team Nick here at the Meta Madness group stage. The warm up for the main event. Meta Madness, a tournament concept that is designed to show us some heroes that you normally don't get to see in a competitive game. Entire event powered by high tech of course. As mentioned, a hero that gets played in a series is only able to be picked once. So the 10 heroes that get played in map number 1 can't be played again in map number 2 and or map number 3. And we have 11 pre-banned heroes. And with how crazy people currently are with gifted subs on my Twitch channel, it seems like we're gonna get the full 20 banned out for the main event. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of uh, crazy people. Saralath being the biggest one of them, but boy. Yeah, a bit unexpected, but either way, it seems like we're going, going going the full distance on that too. But as it stands, we have two of the Spider Queen as our first map in this best of, of three. Dino against Nick, that's the uh, the game right now. On the left side, we already have Garrosh Band and Junkrat, and it is the Ultralisk Respect ban from uh, the team in red. Team Nick bans out Mayev and they ban out Kerrigan. So Ultralisk is already running out a bit of heroes. Now they are also picking not only Mitra as hero, but they're picking one away from Dainu. We are off to a good start. We're definitely off to a good start right now. At this point, I'm just real curious. I mean, it's game number one, right? Normally you don't see too much craziness in the first game. Normally it starts with game three, maybe then when we're heading into the main event four and five. But, yeah, we're already off to a good first map between the two. And we get a Tassadar as a first pick, plus the Space Goat. Now, keep in mind that these two actually played against each other already once. So it's a bit of a rematch that we have here. And we also need to figure out what Nick is going to play. They've been There's actually quite a lot of those boys that have been role swapping back and forth throughout the entire series so far, especially when we're talking, uh, sorry, throughout the entire group stage so far, especially when we're talking about Dino, for example, or Dino's team. But well, the picks, the double pick, it's a Nuburak and, ooh, a Nuburak and May. Okay. Did not expect that. Both of them? Oh, color me intrigued. So now we got the potential... Ice wall, and we got on top of that also Nubarak here. I mean, we had some of that stuff already happening, but yeah, that's definitely not what I expected to happen. Nubarak may as a combo. I'm curious what else they're going to pick here. But Anna gets banned. And what's the final ban against the, uh, the blue team? Yeah, that gives him a lot of CC. May CC and survivability in Nubarak with a cocoon place. Can also then dive in, get those stuns out, of course. Alright. Okay, okay, okay. And there are Stitches! Stitches gets banned. Yeah. It makes a whole lot of sense, but at the same time, I feel a little bit bad. If you get a good support with Stitches as a follow up, then of course you can lock it down. Utha, Malfurion, you name it. But then if you have Tacita there too, then you get the uh, the wall, and he can uh, really help to uh, make sure that the target doesn't escape and can be taken down. But yeah. It is what it is. As it stands now, we're starting to go for the double pick for the blue team, and it's Deckard Kane and Diablo. Yeah, that is the old school combo. I will never be tired talking about this, but back in the days in HTC, we had a time, we had a couple of weeks, where Urel, Diablo, and Deckard Kane as a trio were undefeated for weeks on end. If you could lock those three in, you had a sustainability at the front line that nobody was able to break through, and it was absolutely nasty. It was a long time ago, a, long pat a lot of patches and a lot of balance changes ago, but back then, that was the holy trinity. Mephisto for Nick, and we get Oriel. Okay, so Mephisto plus Sylvanas for the main damage, and Oriel to help them out here. Yeah, gonna whip them in shape a little bit. As Ultralisk, our final pick. What is he gonna grab up? They need some additional damage. They definitely don't have enough yet. Tassada is uh, nice and good, but yeah, it's not enough damage to take that team down. And they go for Thrall. So they got the triple front line. They can go maybe even into the trash lightning, but even if they don't, Thrall brings quite the pain. Tomb of the Spider Queen, map number one. Let's go, everybody.
Here we go, game number one in the series is popping up between Team Nick and Team Dino. And on the left side, we got Dino's team. They're kicking things off with the man himself on Tacita. We got Kelvin on Deckard Kane, Ultralisk on Thrall, Hornio on Urel, and Skok is playing Diablo. And then at the same time, of course, on the right side of the map, things are also getting quite interesting here since we are looking at a double tank at the front line with a new Barak played by Rutsu. And we have Marlo on May. And in addition to that, we're getting My Tri and Sylvanas, Nick on Mephisto, and Oriel gets played by Yazu. It is party time, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, looking good with also the Skull Missile build for... Oh boy, I have no... Actually, that overlay is, is a little bit wrong here. We're actually we're really looking at uh, Dino versus Nick. No, we got still apparently caught in the, in the old game. Sorry for that. But yeah, now score and teams are correct. Trolling Thunder was also taken. And there's a lot of shit already going down straight in the middle. As we have Urel obliterated. Nubrak has already died. So kill after kill after kill over here. Yeah, sorry with the overlay. Uh, it's a lot to handle, honestly, at this point. Normally, I only have to do the observing, the casting, and the other stuff. But right now, we also keep track of all of the banned heroes so that the players have an idea of what's still available to them in every single draft. And that's, of course, some edit time you gotta spend on the organizing. So sometimes I need to catch up with the rest of those things. Either way, as we're now... Getting ready for even more action. They are not stopping in the middle. They are still going for one blow after another. Dino might die too. But Kelvin keeps him alive. But with Diablo now dying again here. They are really starting to just hammer down on that mid lane. Trying to not only get the hero kills. But also take some of the structures down early on in the game. Helps Nick of course also to stack his level 1 a little bit quicker than usual. Yeah, Urel coming in with a big whip. Oriel, not Urel. Urel has the hammer. She unleashes the maze. Maybe she has a wit too. But only for private sessions. So, level 1 for Dibbles. He went, by the way, into the Soul Shield here. Not a bad idea against Mephisto. We've already seen Mako and Mephisto in the group stage. And he was kind of crazy. He really just murdered. And if Nick can do the same here, that damage output, especially later on when you're having your ult and you can lock them in place with Endurance of Hate, always assuming he goes down that path of course then uh, you can just rack those numbers up and uh, yeah give them more than just a bloody nose shielding potion on level four we also got the stacks for thrall as he's going into the pack the bed of barbs for a little bit more slows and oriel with a repeated offense you've been a bad bad boy so yeah exactly yeah, you, I mean, again, if you're a good URL player, then you have either a private sex dungeon somewhere in your house, or you are going full Indiana Jones on us. It's one of the two. By the way, talking about oh, hammering people into the ground here, seems like URL is going to make a play for Sylvanas, but the entire team is now rotating down, so it's going to be a 5 versus 5. These guys love to brawl. It's full-time like, teamfight fiesta here, as they're all jumping in and trying to take him down here. Yep, off we go. Another hit. Marlo, he's trying to hold the point for them. And he has the sustain. Skok isn't fully stacked yet either. But they are all low. This is going to be a bloodbath one way or another. Thrall is dead. They're going for the blue team. Dainu, they can't get the kill. Urel is too powerful here. They're losing three. They're losing four. Thrall, Diablo, Urel, and Tassada are all dead. And they're losing every single gem that they've been holding on those four heroes. Oh, boy. Yeah, that is quite the start for Team Nick. Both teams, they gambled hard as they were moving in for this. And it is the red team that was victorious in the team fight and is now starting to push this heavily. They're level ahead. They got six kills to one. They opened the bot wall up. They have a turn and opportunity now that could make things even worse. And the bottom four is already suffering too. Oriel doing great in that fight and just getting one heal in after another. Yeah, Skok, he gets away, but they should be able to deliver the final few gems here at the top. And also, of course, Nick is at 18 stacks now. 18 stacks for him. But, yep, 7 
finally in their hands. They got the talent. Already we got uh, Oriel isolated through the gate. And Hornio gets attacked here immediately as they're hoping for a counter kill, but they can't get it. Even with the damage output from Mephisto, it's not enough to trade kills here. So there's that. It's quite the game. But at least we have the blue team fighting back now. So as long as they are on even talents, they can take these fights. And they were able to lock at least the kill in against the support. So Oriel went down. And up towards the top now. They are hoping to get, of course, some structures destroyed too. We have 30 gems back in their hands. They are not quite on a turn in yet. But maybe soon. Another big whip and wall stun from Oriel. They're going for Ultralis, but he is still alive. So they can keep him alive. Easy peasy. Same time now. Camps are being taken. My try with Sylvanas is helping to take the Bruiser camp down at the bottom of the map. Anubarak, he holds still 20 gems for the team. And he's solo laning for them for now. They got the double tank. They got Anubarak and they got Mei. And at least for now it has been helping them. Especially of course at the bottom fight. There's a lot of sustain. Nick though in trouble. Nick. He might not be the only one that is in trouble here. It seems like Diablo is on the receiving end of a team fight and there's another whip and another stun Oriel with the place nicely done and that is kill number seven for the red team team nick they are doing really well now and they have level 10 abilities durance of hate is kicking in and nuburak not making a choice yet rutsu is currently busy getting the turn and delivered and they have of course the first web weavers on the ground now the wailing arrow for sylvanas and they can definitely bring the hurt now. That bot fort should fall. Yorel is going to try and defend it. But I don't think that she is going to be able to. So, yeah. At least not if anybody else is moving down too. Alright, here comes another whip. And I gotta admit that Yasu is on point with those. I'm telling you, that guy has a private sex dungeon. He is way, way too practiced on this thing. So they are trying to go for another Diablo kill. The Lord of Terror. Punish me, baby. Oh, yeah. He's going to be hit again. But they are trying to go for the counter kill. And this time, Anubara gets body blocked. And he's dead. Good job by Urel. Horneo able to help them to take the side laner down. And with that, they can maybe even save all of their forts. I thought it impossible for them to save them. But now that they took at least one hero down, they should have a chance to save the top. And maybe they're even able to hold on to the bottom fort. They're definitely trying. So, yep. Here we go. By now, we another whip. I'm telling you, these well practiced. That's years and years of experience here for Yasu. Yeah, very kinky indeed. But that man isn't missing anything. Either he's a hobby archaeologist and is channeling his inner Indiana Jones, or yeah, you know the drill. Durance of Fate is also here. They can't follow up on that, but they might be able to take Diablo down. And Nubarak is back and stunned into a wall. The red team is suffering though. And even though um, Oriel is connecting another whip, they're still losing Nuburak again. And that's the third time that he dies. So, yep. This is a nice back and forth. It, it really looked after the first big team fight that Team Nick might just walk away with this game. But now it's Team Dino that is putting their foot down and saying, nope, we got this game. They have the quest completed on Thrall on level 4. We have them with all four, uh, sorry, all three forts still in the game. And they're getting their turn in. Catching up in kills, slowly but steadily. It's pretty impressive. After falling behind in the early game this heavily, they are getting back to business here. Thrall should still be fine. Durance of hate! And yeah, scratch that. Jinxed it. Thrall is down. He's eliminated. They're getting another hit against Skog and the wall's done too. But Urel is doing work at the bottom of the map. Mephisto is going to try and stop that. With Thrall dead, it's probably going to be an easy defense. And that's something that has now happened to both of the teams. Once they got an objective, one of their heroes died and that allowed the other team to defend this a lot more easily. So now the bot lane gets attacked and Uburak is already diving back out again. Level 13 talents next back up on the menu. Thrall can always try to flank in now that he's back on the map and maybe hit that Sundering that would allow them to isolate a target and get a kill. Ice wall comes in. Doesn't catch anybody here though. Level 13 talents are ready. They're trying to go for May. Marlow, bit low. Urel went deep here. Another fence. 
And ah, they tried to go for Sylvanas. Thrall nearly had a number here. But he didn't have his ult ready. Another 10 seconds until he can use Sundering again. Ah, they're getting the control though. Remorseless is now ready. As we have 13 talents for Team Nick 2. He gets the Skull Missile built. Also in play. It's also pretty nice when you have a wall from Tacita and then Diablo can go for the wall stun. That combo was always sexy and it hasn't lost any of his appeal yet. It's always nice when you can create walls that, uh, that Diablo can stun people into. He's also stacked by now, so that helps with the hit point pool quite a bit. And the fight just doesn't stop. In comes Dibbles with the barbecue play, trying to go for the lightning breath and use the choke point to his advantage. 42,000 damage for Tacita. Another turn in, soon available for the blue team. But the red team already has enough gems. They are still ahead in gems, of course, and they could use them now to get another Webweaver wave on the map. Three deaths on the Nubarak. Outside of that, they are still looking good. So once they can keep him alive a bit more, he should be fine here. But camps are now taken by both of the teams again. We're talking about the Bruiser camp. We're talking also about the Siege Shines at the bottom. Dino gets some help from the old man as potion after potion is getting dropped here. But the Siege Shines are already locked in, so they got those. Can start to move straight for it now. And let's see where that gets them. Siege Shine's about to go down. Might try. They delivered some gems, but they need a lot more if they want to turn. And they're trying to make that work. But it is specifically Yasu and Nick that have to deliver. And both of them are zoned away from the turning point. Durance of Hate connects again. Good damage on Diablo, but not nearly enough. Another wall stun. Another wall. The Eagle is being used to save Sylvanas. In comes the old geezer again. Kelvin is trying to set up the kills for them, but he can't. Telling stories once more. Moving in with a seal. But nobody has died yet as they are trying to turn the fight once again. The fountain was up, so they could easily tap it. And now they're looking to connect with Diablo again. But Skog is still totally fine. And they're turning it. I mean, it's a back and forth the entire time. Each team is just looking for another way to turn the tides of the battle. Yorel, no ult for her. She's down as Mephisto hammers her into the ground. Diablo's on the run, but he gets stunned out by Anubarak and Oriel. And that's another kill. The front line is gone. Tassada, he wants Sylvanas and he gets her. Nice damage by Dino. And another stun. Seriously, Yazi, you gotta calm the fuck down. You can't just whip them here the entire time. Yeah, he makes Thrall his whipping boy. And then Nick comes in for the damage. Another connect, another hit. Tassada is also dead. Yazu, time and time, slapping, whipping, slapping, whipping. They don't even know what's happening anymore. They're just bruised and battered on the blue team. It's nasty. How much damage does Yazu even have? I mean, he has more damage than uh, Nuburag and Mei. Yazu is going bonkers on us here. That was fucking crazy. The man needs to calm down. <laughs> I mean, seriously. The fuck is that shit? Debilitation? I mean, sorry, Rutsu, but you're fired. Nope. You are just fired. Debilitation? No. I'm gonna call shenanigans on that one. No, 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 no. I don't care if you're a second tank. I don't give a damn. Debilitation is a meme talent. Epic Enter is the only real choice on that. Even with Tassadar on the other side, I don't care. Debilitation is just a meme. That is not a thing. Even after Blizzard was trying to make it a thing, that's not a thing. You see, Epicenter would have given you the kill here. Epicenter would have given you the stun and instead Thrall only dies because of your teammates. And you are sitting there and you're feeling bad because it didn't really contribute anything. And that's on you. You could have picked the right talent. You decided not to. No, we don't endorse this here. We don't endorse this. This is a debilitation free stream. This is a safe zone. This is a safe zone for Anubarak players all around the world. Epic enter. I mean, you can epically enter the team fight or you can debilitate people. This is like, yeah. They're by the way murdering them. <laughs> it's, it's getting to a point where it's freaking ridiculous. They have another turn in available just in case that you didn't catch that. So by now we have 15 kills to 5 and they're just going for the boss. They don't even know what to take first. They're going for the boss even though the entire blue team is up. Dainu is checking and he's like, boys, they're doing it. But here comes Rutsu. 
Yeah, they dive back out. Boss is still about to be taken. Team fight is still ongoing. Skok wants to push on the point. Yasu is there. The new Burak is dead. He wouldn't have died if he picked Epic Enter. You all know I'm right. If he would have picked Epicenter, he wouldn't have died. He would have stunned them all and then walked away from it. But now they're playing a 4 versus 5. Yeah, Aegis is being used again. Boss is on its way. They're looking for kill number 2. And they get it on Mephisto. Yeah, he's down. Urel dies. At least they get a counter kill. But a moment, a silent moment for Anubarak as he died. And it's over. We're only feeling a little bit sorry for him. You all know why. 66,000 damage for Mephisto. 64,000 for Tassadar. The mage battle is ongoing here. And on the right side, you're seeing them make the play here for uh, the next Bruiser camp. So, on the left side, there's the camp. And I know there's a couple of Plastic League players that are immediately like, Yo, but look at Tassadar's damage! If he hits Tassadar! Yeah, well, if he hits Tassadar with a stun, and you know what happens? Tassadar's dead. Then he does no damage. So there's that. So, half a level away from 20. May hasn't died yet. Neither has Deckard Kane. Look at the old geezer. Good job on the positioning here. Me likey. Well done. Five deaths on Dibbles. Five deaths on Urel. Uh... Go for stock again, uh, Skog again. How's he looking on stacks? 96. 96. That's not too bad. But now he also has Alpha Wolf on Thrall. So that helps them to focus that front line a little bit more. Uh, Nefisto is soon going to get his level 20. That's of course the biggest problem currently for the blue team. The team Nick is about to hit Storm Talents. And those are gonna hurt. Well, there they are. The Cocoon... Uh, wait, what? All right, cocoon upgrade. Okay, that is unexpected still. So we're going full damage in Uber. What's happening here? And of course the mimic, and we get the diamond resolve. He could have gone for. Uh, they need a new talent on uh, Urel, like a proper level twenty whip talent. Yeah, so some crazy upgrade where she can whip like... I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know what it could be. But we need the Mega Whip or something. something the Sonic Whip. Whatever you want to call it. I honestly don't care. But either way... We got the play for Diablo. And we got the play for the keep. That's pretty much more important here. Now the good news is that Team Dino is soon going to get their own level 20. So there's that. Another hit connects. Skog is already there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Neo. Look at Nick now beasting it. I mean, damn. His damage output is going to crush during this. Uh, that is... Yeah, that's the end of May. That was a great Sundering. That was as good as it gets in that situation. And now they go for Oriel. She self eagles is here. She's still going to get away from this one. Yeah, a little bit more opportunities to whip. And actually, it's crazy how long Yasu survives. He's obviously going to fall. But the fact that he was alive this long is in and of itself already ridiculous. So here comes the move for the bottom keep. They're nearly going to get this one. And up towards the top, the next keep is also... Can they take this one down? Uh, okay. Yeah, those spiders are actually doing an enormous amount of damage. Damn, they're saving both of them. Bottom keep and top keep are both still in play. All right. 16 kills to 9. 16 kills to 9 and they were not able to take any of the keeps down. That actually feels a bit weird. Like, ah, <laughs> I'm telling you, Dino's going to come back into this, isn't he? They're going to go for the comeback here. Yeah. They're going to go straight in for it. But yeah, either way. We have down at the bottom of the map. Urel doing her thing. Whereas the entire red team is just waiting for Oriel. They know that without Oriel they don't stand a chance here. So yeah, here comes the MVP. Yasu is here. Ready to lash out. And here comes the fight. Already Rutsu with the next quick hit. Trying to make the play here. Yeah, I mean, he's at least getting a couple of those now connected. Forts are going to fall at the bottom of the map and very likely also at the top, but they need to go for the team fight. 
Looking for the next play here. 80,000 damage by now for Mephisto. With the Mimic. Battle of Barbs. Uh, using uh, his level 16 as best he can. And dodges out on this too. Ho ho ho. Skok. He just looks at Oriel. He's like, yeah, I'm not your whipping boy. I'm not sure what you think you're doing here. He gets used again. And they save Marlo. Nice. That level 20 all of a sudden paying off. So good job. They're not losing anybody. Not for the lack of trying on the blue team side. They are doing what they can. Another attack down at the bottom of the map. Yeah. Ooh, nice done. Really well done by Rutsu. He's pushing this back hard. Hits the 20, but Anubarak is dead again. Wailing arrow connected, but it was not enough damage to take anybody down. Dino is still alive. And all of a sudden, the blue team is starting to really punish them here. It's another 4 versus 5 for the next couple of seconds. Uh, but they got the kill. They take Dino down. Okay, maybe a chance to win the fight after all. Urel is going for Oriel. And Urel dies. And it seems like Ultralisk is also going to fall. And indeed he does. Thrall is dead. Green Jesus eliminated. Yasu missed one. Yasu missed the whip. But they still get the kills. So now after initially a Nubarak fell first. And it was a 5 versus 4. Team Nick turns around. Channels the, the power of the whip. And takes down four heroes. And now they can go for the boss. And I guess core? I mean, if you go boss here, you go core. There's not enough gems for the blue team to get a turn in. And make a play. Get web weavers and push them back. And that keep is so low that it's going to fall no matter what happens. I love how Yasu is actually the one that is now defending the lane and taking the minions down. Daring anyone else to just approach him and try to sniff out their boss play at the top. He's like, yeah, you get close and I'm going to kill you. I'm going to do it all alone. So off we go. That defense needs to be spot on. It needs to be nearly perfect. I have no idea how they could possibly do that. Yeah, there's the ice wall. They're already trying to go for Dibbles. Sylvanas takes this one down. And Nubarak, and Nubarak. Oh, that's an early Aegis. That's a very early Aegis for them here. That's one cooldown burned. But that boss has lost nearly no hit points and is already on the way to the core. So they're trying to zone them out as best they can. But we're 22 minutes into the game. The boss is doing damage and is hurting them real bad. Shield is falling. So is Tassadar. That's the damage gone. And I guess so are the hopes and dreams of Team Dino to turn this game around and enjoy their own 6.5 out of 10 moment. 86% on the core. Oriel could one-shot it. Decides not to. They're making instead a play for Skok. They want more kills. 21 to 10 in total. A boss is still murdering it and that is game. Team Nick takes the lead with Nick himself at 130,000 damage now. Nicely done. They take the lead in the best of three series. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. So, after we got the disaster of Urel, Oriel, Oriel, Urel, 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 Oriel, out of the way, we have Battlefield of Eternity as the second map. Team Dino against Team Nick and the red team, they crushed. They did real well and I think what teams need to really take from that first map is that you don't give Oriel to Yasu. That seems like a bad, bad, bad idea. <laughs> but now we're heading into map number two. So. The 10 heroes that were played on uh, the first map are not available anymore and we have still our 11 bans in total. So now we got Genji. He's getting banned out here. Li Ming is still up. So we could see a Li Ming first pick if she doesn't get banned now. Even Lunara got banned. Alright. Oh, and you want to get rid of Zarya. That's another one. We got Roots on the other side. What do you ban here? Zarya or Li Ming? Or something completely different, and then you take the other one. They ban ETC, and now it's first pick time. Li Ming or Zarya? Do they want Zarya here? I mean, it's Rutsu, right? So you kind of expect Zarya, but at the same time, Li Ming is just fantastic on this map. And since we have so many of the traditional heroes that are being played here banned out, she feels like the natural choice, and Li Ming gets in taken. So, yeah. Li Ming is there. And 
I mean, at this point, if you're Team Dino, you gotta figure that they are going to go for Zarya if you don't, right? That's at least what you would expect. They take Garrosh and they take Alarak. I like both of those picks. Picking Garrosh also makes sure that Zarya can't be taken together with Garrosh. But now they gotta make the choice whether or not they really wanna take her. And they're actually hesitating on this one. Normally, whenever Rutsu gets a chance to play Zarya, he just locks her in instantly. So I guess we might go for something else here after all. And win against Garrosh. And they go for Muradin. All right. They got Muradin. Yeah, Alarak, Garrosh. I like myself a good Alarak. We haven't really seen Alarak completely pop off yet in the group stage. I think we had him played twice. But a good Alarak is pretty awesome. If you have never get a little charged on level 4 and you're getting a lot of stacks, then oof, you can crush. Especially if your sadism stacks are looking good. Didn't we have one on the first day that had like 160 sadism at some point and it was absolutely going bananas in the late game? I think I remember that. But anyways, we have Leo Band and Malfurion. The interesting part is that technically... They could go for Zarya now. Garrosh, Zarya, Alarak. Alarak on the side lane. And then you take another damage dealer. They could do it. We could still see the speed bubble combo. So, maybe. Or maybe not. But yeah, Battlefield of Eternity. Normally when Ruzo is in the game, Zarya is getting banned or picked. But this might be one of the few where we're not seeing it happen at all. Kelvin is going for Jimmy. And we got Imperius. So Garrosh, Imperius, and Alarak. That's already a lot of CC that they have. Oh, yes. Yep, that is a lot. Yeah, that's that stun, slow, silence. Yeah. Even with Anduin, that's going to be tricky. Yeah, you're going to lose that cooldown battle on the trade time and time again. So yeah, they're not going to go for it. We get the Haka instead, and we get Nazebo. It's actually a ballsy pick too. Nazebo, I mean, spiders, we haven't seen them against the Immortal already a few times. But then again, late game, level 20. You're not going to get your stacks. This is not going to be a Violent Infection game. But Nazebo, he can at least make a couple of moves against the front line here too. It's still a wild choice for Nick. But Dino, what are we going to get as the final pick for them? Anna. They go Anna. Yep, they got a support. Nano boosted Alarak. Eye of Horrors possible. Well, map number two, Battlefield of Eternity, everybody. Team Dino against Team Nick. Let's see if the boys on the right side can take the victory. Or if we're going to see game three in the final best of three of Group A here at Meta Madness. Game number two. Team Dino is a little bit behind at this point. So they got to try and bring it back and force game number three. It's not going to be too easy given the lineup that we have for the blue team here. But they're definitely going to give it a shot. So right now Team Dino playing things out with a very heavy front line. They're running Horny Horno Imperius. Ultralisk got Alarak. And Skok is playing Garrosh. And then at the same time you have Anna. Played by Dainu himself, whereas currently, as the damage, we're getting Jimmy again. So we have a little bit more auto attacks for him as they're heading for that. Nazebo played by Nick, Yasun and Anduin for the red team. Rutsu, he's playing Liming, Maitra and Haka, and Malo on Muradin. So this should be an interesting one. Yeah, I actually like this one already because, well, there is always that Nazebo factor, even though I don't expect that Violent Factor is going to play a role here at all in the game. But on top of that, that front line for Team Dino is pretty sexy. That being said, the game starts with Garrosh dying. That was a nice move from the Haka. So he moved back down with the team and they five-manned it. Still has his global and can use it to move towards the top and ensure that Imperius doesn't get too much headway here. Once that we're going to get... Level 4 for Alarak. It's also going to be quite interesting. Okay. Yeah. Level 1. We have the Thing of the Deep. <laughs> I, I can still remember when they actually introduced it to the game. And they honestly thought that it wasn't OP as fuck. I can still remember that. It was ridiculous. And they were like, yeah, maybe we overdid it slightly. I don't even know what the number was back then what the extra boost was that you got but it was absolutely ridiculous so either way at this point we have a bit more distance 
Fornik, he can poke easily against the Immortal, for example, with it. So that's going to help them later. We got, of course, the Executioner for Jimmy, as he's going to be the main one to dish out damage against the objective for the blue team. Definitely going to keep our eyes on Alarak here. He's going to have a pretty big impact on uh, the game. But, at least for now, Ultralisk eats the Storm Bolt and might actually die. No, not quite. He's able to move out, but that was a real nice follow-up that we just saw. Leading things with the Storm Bolt, immediately the Zombie Wall from Nick and then the damage connected. And of course, Rutsu was there too, with his limbing for some extra damage. So if they can coordinate these plays a little bit more as the game continues, we're going to see some very, very nice kill plays by them. Now, all the way up at the top, they were hoping for the rotational kill, but they couldn't get that. Nick by now is also going into the Blood Ritual as his level 4 talent. And we got, as expected, a negatively charged as a level 1 talent for Alarak. So now it's time for him to slowly but steadily get those stacks together. They're already working on the camp. Yep, taking the shamans here. And triumvirate for Li Ming as per usual these days. Okay, so we're off to the races as the first objective is up on the map. So now the opportunity, huh? maybe even opportunity to go for a kill on Rutsu. Rutsu is dead, and that is the first kill for the blue team. Dainu, the one with the last hit here for them. And yep, there's another move. They go for Marlo. Objective is up. Jimmy. Getting in with the auto attacks. He's just fantastic. It's actually sad that these days Rain hasn't played anymore. There was a time when he was literally first pick on this map because he's just so strong against the Immortal. But without the extra bands of Meta Madness, he's just not really playing a role here. So yeah, he's been sneaking in a bit, but not a whole lot. Nice start into the objective for the blue team. So they're locking in the halftime show without any problems at all. Yeah... They're losing this one. Jimmy is just a bit too strong in the early game. There's not enough damage available for Team Nick just yet. But at least they were able to reduce the shield significantly. It's now down to around 25%. So that's not too bad. That's definitely something that you can defend against. And since there's no significant experience lead for Team Dino either, it's not going to be a talent advantage for the blue team that they can exploit. So, yeah. Things are still looking okay in the early stages. And Nick is at 35 stacks. That isn't not too bad either. He's actually stacking well. He's stacking way better than I expected him to. Obviously, the fight for the Immortal wasn't really too drawn out. So he didn't lose too many uh, too many of the minions there. They're going for another potential play against... Yeah, well, against Garrosh, but they couldn't get the kill here. Good combo again from Ultralisk. He's by now on 5 stacks for his level 4. We're going to keep an eye on that, as well as on the Sadism. But in the meantime, the level 7 Tillons are kicking in. And that gives us the deep rush for Nezebo. So, full zombie plays. And Imperius, he gets the stun. He gets the damage. But he gets dragged as well. And I guess they might get the kill here eventually. Yeah, Marlo is doing his best and hammers another Stormbolt straight into the face of the side laner. So, despite of what Imperius is doing here, he can only delay the inevitable. He falls, but the fort at the top is taking damage as Team Dino is capitalizing on the 4 versus 3 situation that they have going on here. Muradin is finally rotating topside, but that fort has taken a big beating. So, yeah. Another quick play right now for the next few minions. He's at 50 stacks. Are they going to go for the Vile Infection after all? Always assuming this goes to 20 in the first place. I mean, it's not necessarily the game plan here for them, but if the opportunity arises, why not, right? This depends on how the game goes for them. But as it stands, good damage from Nazebo. I mean, our boy is at 23,000 uh, damage on Siege. That's top damage in the game now, so he is dealing with all the waves that he can to stack his baseline a bit quicker. The main damage when we're talking about heroes is still coming from Liming as she's at 15,000. And that's her nearly doubling what Alaric brings to the table for the blue team. But of course, as he is continuing to gather stacks for his level 4, we could see some very big numbers for him in the late game. And we usually do if there's a solid Alaric player. We're in with another jump. Try and go for the drag. Marlo jumps out and the next objective has been announced. So we'll soon see the teams collapse onto the camps again during the halftime show. For now it's just the initial damage against the Immortal that is important. And well, 
Nick is doing a little bit more here, but Jimmy... Yeah, Jimmy is, of course, still Jimmy. Gets the damage out, has his exterminator. That helps them a lot, but the fight at the top is now focusing on the heroes again and keep all of that CC in mind that the blue team is running. They're doing a great job, but now the dragon, that could be a kill, and indeed it is. Imperius dies again. They look great at the beginning of the battle, but then Maitrai turns it with a nice on the Haka. Eliminates Imperius. They still have to deal with the camp down here, but we also have 66 stacks for Nazebo. As they are moving in for the Immortal, and of course the Spiders are now nibbling away at the hit points of the objective. So they are looking great. It's a 5 versus 5 back up on the map, but so far nobody has really been able to get close to them. They go for Dianeon, that's a kill! Nice, the Light Bomb engage, and then Nick with the Ravenous Spirit. They got the level 10 abilities, they have the lead in talents, and they exploit it right away. They are also... Surrounding Imperius and he is dead again. Ah, oh, boy. Rectal play. Holy shit. Someone got thrown across the map. They win the objective. They got 75 stacks for Nazebo. 10 minutes into the game. I'm lying. 8 minutes into the game. Level 10. And they are saving their bottom fort. Yeah, good stuff. They're doing work. Nick is stacking and stacking and stacking. We got the Eye of Horus and, by the way, the Deadly Charge. Okay, no Counter-Strike for Alarak. Deadly Charge it is. They're going for the aggression and for the backline, especially for Anduin. And we got the delivery system as well. So they got to make their plays now. They're about to lose the top four. Five versus five for now. Six kills to one already. Team, Nick's one, team Nick wants to clean to zero. Yeah. Decent defense. Ford hasn't fallen yet. Good for them. Alarak is at 13,000 damage. Still top damage for the team. Oh, they're face checking. No, not like this. They're face check and score gets away. They lose Muradin. He didn't even pop his avatar here. Yeah, that's a face check that for once backfired a bit. And Yazu, he's getting caught hard. First by Alarak, then by Ana. So Anduin is dead. That was some cool play from Dainu. Cool as a cucumber. Skok gets caught and then they save him and turn the fight. Get two kills and can now take the top forward. Well done. Well done. That could have been a big problem for them. If they lose Garrosh right away at the beginning of the battle. Fall into the trap here. Well they kind of did. They just turned it against the opponent. But yeah, if that would have happened, that would have been a big, big issue. Because then you lose the top four, you're probably going to lose a couple of the camps on the map, and the gap widens, but now Team Dino is able to close the gap between the two teams a little bit more. 30,000 damage for Li Ming, by the way. Muradin gets attacked at the bottom of the map, but they're not able to fight for that camp. 82 stacks now for Nazebo. 17 for Alarak. And all the way at the top, Jimmy is pushing the camp out. Maybe an opportunity to take a tower or two down at the wall. And level 13 talents up next. That should be a bit more survivability for Nazebo in the first place. Maitra is dealing with this, so they're not waiting for uh, the Witch Doctor to deal with that. Instead, we now get the, uh, the boots. We got as expected the Ice Block and Illusionist for Liming, which is of course always a win. And the spiders are starting to take this down quickly. He's, by the way, nearly done with his level 1 quest. Let's not forget about that. So, yeah, nearly done with that. So the additional spell power is just around the corner for him. And that is going to help for sure to boost his damage. Against the objective for the heroes. And talking about hero damage, they're going again for Imperius. He nearly get the kill here. Light Bomb and Ana is down. Light Bomb engaged by Muradin and Li Ming shows no mercy. Anna dies. Now they try for Imperius again, and he's barely able to make it out. But in comes the kill as Li Ming gets another reset. Uses the wave of force. They're playing for Ultralisk. Alarak is dead. The reset on the sadism. And more spiders on our boy Jim Rayner. So, yes, they're doing well. Team Nick on the way to lock in another immortal. This time they're going to travel bot side with it. Level 13 talents are finally available for Team Dino. They got the line them up. 
And also the pure malice over here. The only ones that are really malicious are the ones in red. Yeah, they're, they're really dishing it out. Especially Li Ming. Li Ming is at 36,000 damage. Nazebo is catching up, by the way. He hasn't really been focusing in the early game on damage against heroes and was more concerned about taking as many of these minions down as he possibly could. And that still shows, but he's definitely catching up a little bit. The Immortal is stealing the minions, by the way. So Nick can't complete his quest directly. But yeah, another opportunity now as they're going straight down for the bottom. Forte Hakas at the top and is trying to help them to drop both forts. Yeah, Ruzzo sitting at the side here. Was trying to move over apparently. Gets another one connected. Nice. De Haka takes the top fort. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Li Ming. The big hit on Jimmy. That one was awesome. That was well done. Jimmy didn't even know what hit him. He just exploded. Just poof. And he was gone. Yeah, they get the entire wall too, don't they? The Zebo, of course, with the toads and the spiders taking all of this down. Level 16 talents are now ready for them. Top sides, they're going to take that fort 100%. They're not going to waste any additional time there. The Zebo went straight into the ring of poison by now. And they're still fighting this out. More damage against Ultralisk and Skork. There comes, uh oh, the Ravenous Spirit. And the Haka missing the ult. Instead, they're going for Li Ming. And she's dead. Li Ming thrown into an Alara combo. And that delivers another kill for Team Dino. And they're getting Muradin. Yeah, well, they're zipping him in for just a second. But they're not getting the kill because Yasu still had his trade available. Has, of course, now the level 16 talent that allows him to pull two heroes out of the fire. And Malo only survived because of that. So, yeah. That was a nice job by the support player for Team Nick. We have now 104 stacks for Nick himself with Nazebo. The They're looking at 10 kills to 4. They still have more than a half level lead. But Alarak is at 21 stacks. Has, of course, lost the sadism earlier and is trying to bring this back. They're making another move for the camps. Is at least having a numbers advantage for a bit longer, but they need to take some structures down. That's what they're trying here. The funny part, by the way, is that Team Dino still holds onto the fort at the top, so that one has never even fallen. And Nick again with the damage against Skog. And Li Ming always wants to come in and then get the kills and the resets. And that's the cool thing about this combo. We have Nick just nibbling them down with spiders, with zombies, and with toads. And then Rutsu is just looking for opportunities to get final hits in. And is absolutely crushing, getting resets, and then following up with one hit after another. Thanks to the damage that he can dish out here. 51,000. Big lead for them. And, yeah, that's not too shabby. So, again, it's the Immortal that's up. And Kelvin is right away trying to grab it. They got level 16 talent, so it's an even talent battle between them. But here comes the move for Anna. Mirrodin gets punished. Gets pushed around here. But he's able to dish the Stormbolt out. And there's the Ravenous Spirit again. And the connect doesn't happen. So Nick gets some damage and pulls pushed them back for a bit. The Haka is also joining back in. But nobody's really dying in that little exchange here. Nick is now trying to go for the spiders. And yeah, he is chunking that immortal down. Alarak, top damage for his team still with a 32,000. Rutsu with another combo as well. And spiders everywhere. As he was disgusting, by the way. Spiders, toads. It's just crazy. Oh, talking about crazy. They burned that one down, didn't they? One second here was at nearly full HP, and another it was at 50. Halftime show initiated. Yeah, can they take this one, though? Talking about doing crazy damage to the objective. All of a sudden, they are the ones that are doing work here. Combo after combo from Li Ming, and then Azibo, thanks to the extra range that he has with his level 1 talent, can just drop the spiders here. So, yeah, they're looking good. Marlo with a big jump. Hoping for a storm ball that can be followed up on. That hasn't happened yet. Ultralis combo doesn't connect. No silence against Marlo. Muradin is still fine. Camp at the bottom of the map. And they're starting to slowly work towards the left side again. 118 stacks now for Nazebo. It's going to be the big question. What does he pick on level 20? Do they hope for wild infection in the late game? Or does he just upgrade his level 10? They're going once more for Skork. And that's a kill. That's a double. Alarak and Garrosh, they both die. And there's another follow-up as they drop Reyna. Jimmy is dead. Dainu gets chased. The drag at the bottom 
on the Imperius, and that's four heroes taken down, and a big opportunity to grab the Immortal, take the top fort, maybe even a keep. The Haka is still defending the bottom, but whew, they are popping off here. 14 kills to 5. They are playing this composition so well. I mean, kudos to Nick and his boys. They have great coordination here. Good zoning the entire time. And I mean, just think about what we're having for Team Dino. If they get a good grab on anybody and then unleash a stun combo and maybe even the silence, they can get killed so quickly. Anduin is ruining a lot of these plays though, and so is Li Ming with her wave of force that she can utilize. Then you have Muradin just protecting the flank, Marlo doing a fantastic job in this game. And now they have an opportunity to go for the keep. They've done damage at the bot lane too, the Haka is pushing those waves out. And yeah, Nasibo, even without the Vile Infection, you can see how much damage he can do to structures with his toads, with his spiders, and they are upgrading the level 10. He doesn't wait for the Vile Infection, even though technically he could. He's only 30 away from it, but they're hoping for more here. They really want to exploit that Storm Talent advantage that they are rocking. And Nasibo is interrupting. So he doesn't get a lot of value out of his uh, ult that he was trying to use here. Nick is still pushing though, and they're gonna do at least some damage to that core if they start to focus it. If Nazebo can get close enough to unleash a few toads, that's definitely gonna be the case here. But he's sticking a bit away from it, but the core is falling down to 80%. Immortal is finally taken, but they are on the retreat slowly and steadily. And I think I have to disagree with Nick here. I really think it would have been better for him to go for Vile Infection. Because he's at 150 stacks already, and there's still two levels missing until Team Dino has level 20. So he is going to get those stacks. He doesn't need too much more. Granted, the lanes are pushed out, and the bot lane has also taken damage, so there's always a chance to end it early. But if you end up in a situation where both teams hold 20, then Vile Infection is a massive advantage. And that would have probably been the safer play here. He can take it more or less right now. The Arca is dead and so is Anduin. That's exactly what we are talking about. All of a sudden, Team Dino is starting to fight back in this game. Nick gets attacked. And he's still able to make it towards the fountain, isn't he? Muradin then again might not be so lucky. He jumped straight into Ana and Dino said, Thank you very much for the easy layup here. Comes in with the sleeping dart and they drop Muradin too. Muradin is dead. And now they're down to two players, the two damage dealers. Now they did a lot of damage, but they're losing structures. They're going to lose the fort. And that's, of course, also the opportunity for the blue team to finally close this gap in experience nearly completely. So they are about to hit their own Storm Talents now. 45,000 damage for Alarak. But, yeah, 60,000 for Nazebo, 77,000 for Li Ming. Immortal back up in 10 seconds. Muradin down for another 30, so I suppose they're losing the halftime show at least. Mm, yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, so for the time being, there's the 20s. You had to give this one up. Team Dino with a chance, with an opportunity. Muradin, they're giving up the halftime show. And after that, Muradin is back. But as you can see, Nazebo is at 168 stacks. He didn't... I mean, the problem is he didn't even get any value out of this. He started it, and then he ha either he had to interrupt or he was interrupted. But he got zero value out of the top fight from uh, the Revenant Spirit upgrade. Like, nothing. And now that they need Vile Infection, that would have been great for them. But they've been dominating the team fight, so maybe even without Vile Infection they can do that. Ah yeah, well, Ravenous Spirit is already doing work, and he gets the kill with it. So good for him. Gets one kill, can't follow up with a second, but that zoned them out completely. They're still far behind on the objective though, so that's a problem. But at least they have the 5 versus 4 advantage on the map. And as he's making a play for the Immortal now, of course, we got Team Dino trying to kamikaze in. They have to. They can't lose this one. If they lose the Immortal here, then they're losing the bottom keep and maybe even the game. Yeah, here comes the play for Imperius with the drag! And they get it again! Also, Alara got hit by the Contagion, so he's dead. And that is just way too much. They've been dominating the team fight the entire game, and now they're just continuing what they started here. Kelvin, he's gonna die too. And, well, 
Yes, they get the objective, but that's not really going to help them. The game is going to end right here. A five-man team wipe ends this show. And that's a 2-0 victory for Team Nick. Nicely done. Well played by them. They're taking second place in the group and therefore get a good seeding for the main event, for the main tournament, for the playoffs. Well done as they lock in the victory against Team Dino here in Group A of Meta Madness. Garrosh comes back, dies again, 28 kills in total, but a great performance here by the Red Team. GG. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.